Hello, this is my first YouTube video in a very long time and I'm not used to filming in this format where like it's landscape and not portrait I think where I'm like the long ways and not the tall ways so bear with me but I've been debating doing this for a really long time because it's like I always want to have my kitchen clean and perfect and have everything looking great but I decided you know what I'm just gonna film it how you guys see me every day so today I'm gonna be making these ham balls um, it's kind of an old-fashioned recipe and it uses cans of deviled ham which I'll show you in a second and it uses some um, ground beef so it's a really good recipe I know the deviled ham isn't for everybody but I figured I'm gonna film this one and I'm gonna show you guys and this is gonna be our first YouTube video so stay tuned I'm having trouble like looking at the camera. I think you're over here. Am I looking at you? Am I not looking at you? Am I looking at you? Um, hold on, let me move you guys. I know I'm gonna get somebody who's gonna complain about like the movement of the camera, but I'm trying my best here, people. Yes, I still have my Christmas tree up. Um, I ordered one of those Christmas tree bags to put it away because I donated my old Christmas tree to my friend Kristen for her park. I'm just doing a couple of the morning dishes, which is AKA the cat food plate. Um, and I gave her the bag. So I had to order a new bag and it's coming today. So I'm gonna take the tree down. The good news is I never put any ornaments on it except for a couple new ones that I bought and I was gifted. So it's not a lot of work and it's a pre-lit so I don't even have to take the lights off. I tried to blow dry my hair and put some makeup on but then I decided just to stay in my pajamas because that's the way I am all day at home and that's the way you're gonna get me here. So anyway, be right back. Am I the only one who can't start out, hair in my mouth, start out cooking with like any dishes in the sink? Like I have to have an absolutely clean Space. There was only like three dishes in the sink, but I can't stand it. So now I'm scrubbing out the sink too, even though I just scrubbed it with comet yesterday. And then I can finally be in the mindset to cook. I have my little handy scrub mommy sponge. I just got a new one, so she's a little stiff. But anyway, I get everything nice and clean, and then I actually am going to make myself a quick iced coffee. I have a little bit of a headache and then we'll get started. The camera keeps going off. Anyway, I brewed myself a cup of coffee. I'm gonna put some ice in it so that it cools off. And then I'm gonna use that, um, if you follow me on Facebook, you know I have one of those ice bags that crushes the ice. So I'm going to get that out. I know these angles aren't good. I'll get better at it. This ice bag comes with this cloth bag. It's like canvas and then this um, mallet. And it crushes up the ice so it's almost like slush ice. There's always this lady whenever I used to post this on Facebook because you know I get all the crazies who would be like so upset that I used this ice bag and I said I washed it in the washing machine. I washed it with like dish towels and stuff. And she's like, you wash your underwear in there and then you're gonna wash this and then use it for ice. Well, how does she wash her dish towels? You know, well, maybe I'm the weirdo, I don't know. But yeah, you get this. And then I just get my frustrations out by pounding this ice out. Okay, then you've got this bag of ice. See, it's all crushed up in there. I'm gonna go ahead and get a glass. And then I'm gonna try to add my cold coffee in there. I won't use it all. And then I'm going to add this crushed up ice. You can see it's all like Snowy, is that the right word? Oh, it's my favorite kind of ice. And then 
add my little straw, my little plastic reusable straw. And then, oops, I hate these coffee glasses, which is why I never tell you about them. They're so easily breakable. Then I just add my coffee mate. Oh my gosh, it's about to overflow. Let me take a sip. So what we have here is a bowl. We have a small yellow, medium size to small yellow onion. We're gonna grate this. And then we've got this Underwood doubled ham. You have two cans of that. I have almost a full pack of saltines. And then we're going to use one pound of ground beef. I have a two pound package, so we're just gonna use half of it. The rest I'm gonna cook up because I add it to the dog's food. So we're just gonna add this meat to the bowl like that. I'm gonna put that on the side to cook up for the dogs later. And then we're gonna go ahead and we're going to open up this Underwood ham. Now, it looks a little weird, but trust me, it's delicious. A lot of you watching this probably remember this stuff from back in the day. It's basically just ground up ham and it has some flavor to it, so I like to use it. But if this really bothers you, you can um, buy some deli ham and grind it up in your blender or food processor. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to add two cans of that. I have to charge my old phone because that way I think I can do double camera. But... This is how it is. I found this at Family Dollar. I always see it at Walmart. Find it easily anywhere. So next we're gonna take almost a full package of saltine. I just used a little for my soup yesterday. And we're gonna crush it up into as fine of a crumb as we can. I just carefully do it in this bag over the bowl so that we can get it all in here. Like that. And then right above where I'm working is my um, spice cabinet. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some dried parsley and add that. Mostly I like this for the color. Now remember that the doubled ham has salt, as does the saltine crackers, so I don't add more salt. And I will put the exact measurements for this that I use in the um, written recipe on the blog. But you can just eyeball it. Then I use some onion powder. A good rule of thumb for seasoning is just to kind of spread it all, all over the bowl. That way you're getting like a, you know, like an amount equal to the amount of stuff that you have in the bowl. Then here I have some ground mustard going to add a little shake of that across the top and then I'm going to add some black pepper like that. I love a lot of pepper. If you like to use less pepper, go right ahead. And then the next thing I am going to add is some milk to kind of soften up those crackers. See, now when I have two cameras, you'll be able to see everything that I'm doing. So I'm just going to do about a quarter cup of milk to that. We're going to do one egg. Because I don't want these super dense, so I'm just using the one egg. And then I'm going to go ahead and grate the onion. So I've got my onion here. I always put a piece of paper towel over the cutting board so that I don't get those little bits of paper all over. And then I'm just gonna remove the two ends. And get all that off. Oh, there's a little piece of paper on that one. I like to peel off that slimy outer layer and then we're done and the cutting board is still clean. And then like I said, this is going to be 
grated into the recipe. So I just get my little box grater out here and then I grate. And this cutting board has the little ridges because you wanna get those onion juices in here too. You have to be careful of your hand so you don't grate your, your fingers down. If you want, you can stop at the end and then just finely dice it, but my hands are now like resistant to cuts and heat. So I just stop when I'm pretty close to the end. Okay. So you see you got yourself a nice little pile of onions here. And then we're gonna add that to the bowl. So I'm gonna bring my bowl back here and we're gonna scrape this all in. Now we're gonna mix. So I'm just gonna use my hand here, which I know is gonna bother some people. But you actually know, I mean, I guess it depends on where you live as far as food service and sanitation goes, but do you know like gloves actually make things dirtier in some cases because people don't wash their hands? I mean, we're just eating this, but people don't wash their hands when they use gloves and they, they will tend to use gloves and not take them off or change them. So a lot of times the rule is if you're cooking something, like after you handle it, obviously you're gonna kill the germs and your hands are washed. So, I don't know, that's just me. This mixture is kind of wet. Again, I'm looking for the camera, so bear with me. Um, I'm gonna show you how it looks. Okay, this is the meat mixture. And then I'm gonna go ahead and roll that into balls and I'm going to add it to this casserole dish. So we're gonna just do cocktail size meatball, so about an inch and a half to two inches. And then after that, we're gonna make a sauce and uh, pour that over and then we're gonna bake this up. It's gonna be so good. Okay. So we're just gonna do like two inch balls. They don't have to be super perfect. Okay, so we're just going to do small balls about this big and add them to this casserole dish. And then they're a little wet, but you can add more crackers if you want to. I like them to keep them juicy, but um, they'll bake up for a little bit. Then we're gonna make the sauce on the side and pull them from the oven, pour that sauce over, and then it will bake up nice and sticky, sweet, savory with that sauce over it. So I'm gonna show you guys that sauce in a second. I ran out of room in this pan but, cause I probably just put a little bit too much ground beef in without measuring it appropriately, just eyeballing it. So I have seven meatballs here on this tray, but since these are gonna bake up first, I can just add these when I'm done to this and then pour the sauce over. So that's what we're gonna do. Okay, over here in my skillet, I have about a cup and a half of ketchup. I um, added some water to the ketchup bottle to get the rest out, but you're gonna use about a cup, cup and a half of ketchup and then I have this can of consomme I brought back from um, Canada. So it's a beef base. You can use any kind of beef broth or whatever, but I just like this one because it's thicker and it's more of like a bouillon. And it's also got some like pork, pork fat and stuff in here. If you can find consomme here in the States, I definitely recommend it. But we're gonna whisk this together. And then when I get that bubbling, we're gonna add some Dijon mustard and some brown sugar and a couple shakes of Worcestershire sauce. I know I keep saying this, but I will get better with the camera work. I'm just trying to figure out the best way in this particular kitchen because it's been so long since I've done cooking videos in here. Okay, so while that's about to start to bubble up, we're just gonna add a couple shakes of Worcestershire sauce to this. And then I'm eyeballing everything, but if you need to measure, I will have the exact measurements 
I do about a tablespoon of brown mustard in there. Gives it some tanginess. I'm going to go ahead and add a tablespoon-ish. Again, I'll have the exact measurements, but I do about a heaping tablespoon, maybe a little bit more of brown sugar to that. And then we're gonna reduce the heat because we don't want it to boil over. So when that kind of comes up to a simmer, we're gonna whisk this up and let this simmer down. You want this to be more of like a glaze. So we might need to add a little bit more brown sugar to it. If you don't wanna use the ketchup, you can also use a can of tomato soup as well. So we're gonna let this simmer while we pop the meatballs into the oven. And then I'll show you guys the rest. So while that all works, I like to clean as I go. So I'm gonna come over here and do my dishes. I have a sip of my coffee. That way you're not having all this cleanup to do at the end. My water here gets so hot. I know I need to turn down the hot water here because when it's on the highest setting, it's like scalding, boiling hot water. Do you guys clean as you go or do you leave it all for the end? I find that if you clean as you go, you seem to enjoy cooking a lot more than people who leave it all till the end. And then you have a huge mess to clean up and then you don't like enjoy the food as much. I don't know, that's just me. But yeah, like I was saying, I feel like if you clean up as like steps are being completed that you don't have to be very hands-on about, you seem to enjoy the recipe so much more than if you're left with a big mess at the end. At least that's how I feel. I'm also one of those people who has to have every dish in my sink done at the end of the night. Like before I can go to bed, I cannot stand to wake up to dirty dishes. I think it like adds such a, like a bad start to your morning to wake up to a sink full of dishes. Is anyone else like that or is that just me? I don't know, it just feels nice and fresh when you wake up in the morning and your kitchen is, even the rest of the house could be a huge mess, but if the kitchen's done, I feel so much better. Like just to be able to like have my coffee and not have to look at like a huge pile of filth in the sink. But I know a lot of us are tired at the end of the day and it seems impossible. I don't know, it's just a little treat I give to myself at the end of each day. What do you do? Tell me all about it in the comments. I'm watching my neighbor out there clean off her car. And the funny thing is I got home from Michigan on Sunday and I had a rental car because my car's been acting up and I need to get it in to get fixed. And I haven't. And then Mr. was working, so he hasn't been able to. But my actual car is in our indoor garage and I haven't taken it out since Sunday. So I haven't had to do any kind of like winter clean off of anything, which I'm super grateful for. So I've just been like Ubering stuff because parking is very limited in our neighborhood. And especially when it snows, people tend to like park their cars and then just leave it. And uh, I wasn't sure like what time Mr. would be coming home. So I've literally just left the car in there since I've been home and I haven't gone anywhere. Which sounds crazy, but that's what happens when you work from home. So we're gonna come over here and you can see that this is thickening up. I don't think that I need to add more brown sugar, but if you're new to cooking, this will be just fine. It's going to continue to caramelize up with the meat, and remember, like, flavor is going to be added when it's cooking up with the meatballs. So you can just learn to eyeball things and taste them to meet your needs or meet your tastes, but I'm just going to let this simmer a little bit more. You don't want to have any kind of, like, chunks of mustard in there. So we're going to let this continue to cook down, and then when the meatballs cook for about 10 or 15 minutes, we're going to pull that out and add this to the top. I also like to clean off the counters. I like to use this Thieves spray because it doesn't feel so chemical, and then I feel like it's safer around food, but it also kills all the bacteria. Maybe I'm wrong. Don't burst my bubble. I also just love the way that it smells. 
So yeah, I just clean this all up. That way, when the meat when the meatballs come out, we don't have any cleaning to do. We can just relax. So I'm just kind of waiting for everything to get done. I figured I would chat with you guys for a little bit because I realized over on Facebook, like we never get to like, you never really get to see me or like hear me. So I get like bogged down in just like the written word. And then I feel like sometimes, I don't know, it's just nice to talk, right? I wish we could have like some kind of forum where like we were both, like we were both engaging instead of just me like talking all the time. But um, I am excited to tell you guys that I surprised my mom with a cruise so sorry I was wiping something down on the sink so I surprised her with a cruise so we're going on a cruise a week from today out of Florida and it's something I saved up for for a long time it's something I've always wanted to do funny story is that her and I went on the Disney cruise back in 1989 I think it was 1989 because we were on the ship it was that huge earthquake during the World Series in the San Francisco and like Candlelight Park because I remember we were on the cruise ship and they were talking about it but um and back then it wasn't called the Disney cruise it was called like the big red boat but anyway I've been super intrigued by the Disney cruise because I don't want to be on one of those cruises where it's like round the clock partying and like wet t-shirt contests and stuff and I've heard that the Disney cruise is a little bit more chill and it had like a really nice itinerary that of islands I actually wanted to go to and I heard when you're a childless adult on the Disney cruise that there's lots of um I gotta stir this sauce there's lots of adult only areas that are fairly empty because most of the people are on there with kids and I've been super excited about it. I've watched all these like YouTube vloggers for years talk about the cruises. So we're going on that and I'm really excited to be able to take her. Um, I'm really excited to like see what it's all about. I'm the planner in the family when it comes, excuse me, when it comes to her and to Mr. So the thing I'm really looking forward to is getting on a ship and everyone telling you what to do. So like, I don't have to think about where to go for dinner or like what activities to do or anything like that. So I'm really looking forward to that. to just having like a relaxing vacation where I can just sit basically. But I have some fun stuff planned. Like I said, I've been saving up for this for a while. So we're gonna get into Orlando Friday night and we're going to a restaurant that's been on like my bucket list for the last 10 years and um, I think it'll be really fun. So that being said, I don't know what the internet's gonna be like on the ship. I know you have to pay extra for it. So um, I think I might have to schedule some posts and stuff to um, be able to keep up with Tipsy. But if I'm missing for a week, you know what happened. Okay, so the meatballs are par cooked. I'll try to hold this up for you. See that? And I'm gonna pull the ones from the tray out. I'm leaving the oven on. I'm going to go ahead and add these to, ooh, they're hot, duh. Hold on, okay. I'm gonna go ahead and add these ones from the cookie sheet to this. I wonder if I could just scooch these around. See, they're still pretty soft, so you gotta be careful. I'm gonna add these to the casserole dish. They're toasty on the bottom. And then I'm gonna go ahead and take my sauce. Can you guys see that? Yeah. And I'm gonna pour that over the ham balls. So this sauce is kind of like a tangy, mustardy, tomatoey sauce, which will complement the ham and the um, beef really well. So I'm gonna take my spatula and get the rest of these gooey bits out of the bottom like that and then we're going to put this ah Jesus I forgot that was hot <laughs> blooper reel I'm gonna told you my hands are like leather I'm gonna take this and put this back in the oven and let this cook up for 35 minutes okay I think they are done. 
The timer went off. They're bubbling away. Ooh, they look so good, you guys. Let me show you. Let me pick up the phone. Look at that. Those look so good. They smell so good. You can smell like how tangy they are. I love that they're bubbling up like that. You guys are gonna love these. The last thing you wanna do is let these sit for about 10 minutes. Um, that way the sauce kind of thickens up after it comes out of the oven. And then I'm gonna show you guys, or take a video of myself eating this deliciousness. Actually, I'm lying. I'm gonna eat one right now because I can't resist. I'm gonna put a little bit of that sauce on there. Look at that. Okay, they're super tender. Can you see it? Let's try it. It's burning hot. The texture and flavor is just so good with that deviled ham. It's like a different kind of meatball you've never had before. You're really going to love it. It's a great appetizer. It's a little different. Like I said, <clears throat> it's a different texture and flavor than you're used to. I really love them. You're going to love the sauce. I'll also link the written recipe on the tipsyhousewife.org. I'll link that in the description. I want to take a nice picture for a tipsy website. And I feel like this crusty casserole won't hack it. So I'm putting these in this bowl. But honestly, if my family were here, I would just serve it out of this crusty casserole dish. Also, are any of you like me where you will eat these crispy bits on the side? Because you know I'm going to scrape that off in about a second. There's nothing I love more than like crispy tomato anything on a dish. I just want to get up all this sauce. Look at that. Woo, Baba! Look at that sauce, you guys. It's so good. So good. Okay, you guys. This is how it looks plated up. I'll just put, if I was having a party, which I'm not, I mean, I'm, I'm now going to have a meatball party by myself since Mr.'s at work, but if I was uh, serving these at a party, I would just put a little thing of toothpicks next to this and call it a day. They smell good. They look delicious. They taste delicious. You're going to love this. Okay, so I was editing this video and then I realized that I didn't film like what they call it, like an outro. But I really had fun filming this and I hope you guys, if you watched it, that you had fun watching it and that you liked the recipe and how everything came out. And I hope that you make the recipe and let me know in the comments what you think of it. It's a great recipe for upcoming Super Bowl parties or like football watching or whatever sports you guys do. Um, and it was really fun to record this. So I hope as I get better, I'll have some different camera angles for you. I have some tripods I can test out and some lighting. Um, <clears throat> And eventually when we get our new house done, I'm actually like designing the kitchen to be more friendly to filming these kind of videos. So hopefully they'll just get better. And I hope to get up to at least like one a week. For now, it's probably going to be like every two weeks, but I'm going to do the best I can. And thank you for watching and following me and for making all the recipes and for being here. And I love you guys and I hope you enjoyed this. I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.